We're now going to move uh, to the uh, Council on Finance Administration report, and Jack Scharf is going to come with Bob Dietz, the chair of uh, CFA, uh, to open up the report. Good morning. My name is Bob Dietz. I'm the chair of CFNA. I'm here with Jack Scharf, and in a few moments, Judy Colorado, who served with me. And we're here to present some legislation in regards to budgetary and some issues that we've identified that we believe need to come before the conference for action. Jack? Thank you, Bob, and good morning, everyone. As you may know, over the last 14 months, our conference's investigative committee has met to investigate charges brought against a conference clergy person. As part of its investigation, the investigative committee found that the conference did not have in place clear policies regarding a number of important human resource and financial accountability issues. Our discipline authorizes, in these cases if warranted, for the investigative committee to make recommendations to both the Cabinet and CFNA. The investigative committee referred these warranted issues to both bodies. Both groups worked on the matters referred to them, and CFA has reviewed, discussed, and unanimously recommends these to you today. There are nine proposed policies which you have in your booklet on pages 9 and 10. These policies, we believe, represent both best practices for both church and nonprofit and even business organizations. The legislation before you proposes policies that will provide, we believe, clarity for congregations and clergy. And therefore, Bishop Scholl, I recommend the adoption of these policies. Thank you very much. Uh, there is not, it is not, there is not, <laughs> oh, hello. Uh, a second is not needed uh, because it comes from one of our um, agencies elected by this body. So it is before us. Are you ready to vote? All who would support signify by saying aye and raise your Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, microphone number four. Please state your name and church. Heidi Hibbs from LifeGate Church. And I would like to move that this be referred, the proposal for um, back to the CNFA. That, um, and if I get a second, I'll advance. Okay. There's a motion to move it. Uh, back to CFA, refer it back to CFA. I did hear a second. You may speak to it. This meeting was originally scheduled so we could come together after a special conference. Then some budget items were added. Now we have some additional budget amendments. These policies and other legislation that we only received on Tuesday. Yesterday, we got some F and Qs that show there are a lot of questions about this proposal. We are coming back together for our regular meeting in 60 days in May, just two months from now. These can wait until more of us have a chance to understand that the full meaning of what we are being asked to support. Thank you very much. That is a speech for the, uh, the referral. Is there a speech against the referral? All right. Uh, would CFNA uh, like to add a word? Yes, you may. Uh, thank you for the uh, proposal. Uh, we uh, have dealt recently with a number of issues um, in different areas, and this is one area that has been identified. While I understand the argument of waiting 60 days, I would plead that this is something that we need to institutionalize and put in place. 
for the betterment of the conference. And while 60 days may seem like a short period of time, uh, we firmly believe that action be should be taken this morning. All right, the motion before you is to refer this back to CFA. All who would support referring this back to CFA signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Aye. All opposed by the same sign. Aye. It does not carry. We're back on the main motion. A question may be in order. Mike, go to microphone number three to the front. Please state your name and church and the purpose. Uh, Jackie Burgess, Emery's Hill. And I'm looking at page nine, line 32 through 34. And I'm looking for clarification on your standards of what it means to falsify. All right, would somebody from CFA? I'm looking for clarification on the standard for you of what it means to falsify. Does that include misstatements? Does that include um, unintentional information included, say, on FAQs? Um, so the question is, what, what does falsify mean? And if somebody, as I understand it, if somebody puts something unintentionally on a document, that they maybe didn't know is that falsified. Or misstated. Or, or misstated, yes, okay. Is there a standard? As always, uh, you know, the word falsify and, and trying to categorically get to firm definitions as we work uh, on CFNA to have employee policies, um, there is the written law and the intent of the law, so to speak, and how they come together. Uh, so it's tough to, to in some way categorize or qualify what that means. Um, the general rule that we would have is if someone willingly or willfully makes a statement, decision, or something that would go against the principles of our conference, uh, that would be called falsification in our mind. No All right, thank you very questions. much. Yes, microphone number two name and church and purpose. Thank you, Bishop. Bill Cheng Sim, lay member at large, Can I fly UMC. Um, my question is actually three on this uh, 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 proposal. Um, the page nine, uh, the line 21 to 25, complaints and just resolutions. Excuse me one second. Can you just bring up the stage speakers a little bit? We're having trouble who, from hearing uh, people who are speaking at the mic. Would you repeat the page and line numbers yep. again? Page nine, uh, line 21 through 25. That's the first one. Second one is a 35, and last one is a 40. So I have three questions. You can ask one. <laughs> uh, then before I ask question, that the, your reference of a book of discipline 442.2 is wrong. The 442.2 is about uh, sharing com uh, communion with other denomination for the central conferences. So that re re reference is wrong. So I, wanna, uh, I want to correct uh, uh, that reference. Okay, we'll make sure that gets corrected. Can I have that number so I can refer to a book of Why discipline? Why don't you go with another question? Yeah, that would okay. be fine. Uh, the complaints and just resolution. This whole purpose is uh, safeguarding the annual conference. Say, uh, um, that purpose, we have uh, insurance. What, I, what is your question? So my question is that uh, when this issue actually happened years ago, I personally involved and I, I put the resolution to the annual conference regarding this one. It was said, it was decision was made by the insurance company, not us. Wait, so I, we, I there don't, was, I don't there think. Was, you, you're now making a speech. Oh, sorry. What so is your my question? My question is that uh, uh, we, you, you are, is that asking that conference wants to set up a fund for the settlement or payment or let the insurance uh, take care of this issue when there is anything? That's my question. You understand my question? Do you understand the question? You want to set up a line item in the budget, say we have uh, appropriate uh, $100,000 for settlement of possible lawsuit or something that we have to settle with a complaint. 
Is that what you want to do? Uh, so I think there are two things here this morning. One is a budget that we presented to you in a few moments is under a different motion that deals with the issue of, of funding resolutions. This is a proactive, not retrospective policy change that we are putting before you for consideration. It is something that, in the go forward, it is not a statement with regards to CFNA having any opinion with regards to what's happened in the past with the trial or any of that. We, we, have, we're, we have stayed out of that. We know no knowledge of it, so to speak. This is coming out of that from the investigation, the work that was done, there were recommendations made to CFNA which we felt unanimously should be moved to move forward with policies with regards to how we conduct ourselves and such there is what's before you this morning. So my question is that, is, will there be any light item in our budget regarding this issue? Or let insurance pay for it? In regards to previous things no, or going forward? Going forward. We, we, do, we have no budget line items for, there's a small fund that is used for minor things that's less than $40,000, I believe, in the budget. So the things I confuse that what this is asking for approval is that you want to make that pool of money for the settlement. No, I think that's inaccurate. That these, uh, these. Uh, yeah, we're not asking for a creation of any pool of monies, but rather that any time that there's a need for these to be justly reviewed, that they come back through CFNA and CFNA does its job to review these properly and ensure that they are aligned with the goals of the conference and our membership. So my question Thank is you. that- Mr. Sim, I, we've, we, I've given you lots of room here and you're gonna keep coming back, so thank you very much. Yes, uh, microphone number one, Lynn Caterson. Lynn, K Lynn Caterson, lay member at large. Uh, speaking as your chancellor, there was just a typo. The petition, uh, or the section, the discipline, is 424, not 442. Okay, So it's 424.2, so everyone can correct their book right now. Just All a right. typo. Thank you very much. Yes, I hear a question over here. Microphone number two. Thank you, Bishop. Chuck Delkamp, lay member. Uh, I have a question and a possible amendment. Uh, uh, is we'll, that in order? We'll try it, let's see. My question is on lines 43 through 45. If the intent of that sentence is that uh, gifts given honor of a retirement do not need to follow the procedure outlined above. Generally, yes, that, that is true. Um, what we encounter is when uh, elders retire, there is general collection of funds, and, and it's not our intent to audit those funds or be part of that process. So yes, it's outside of that. Okay. Uh, my amendment, if I may, Bishop? Uh, let's try it. Okay. Uh, the amendment is to add after on line 44, after the word retirement, or reassignment, or reappointment. Or what? Reappointment or assignment. Reappointment or assignment. Sure, I, I, th I think that's fine. I, I think probably what we really want to say is that any reason that a congregation wants to take an offering for a clergy person is fine, as you know, as long as that offering is received and then a check given to the pastor. Okay. So. Maybe what we want to do is just take out retirement and on any occasion, just insert any occasion. Certainly. I mean, I don't want to tell you what to do, but I think that's where you're headed. Is I, that I correct? I would certainly be happy to remove uh, retirement and take a special gift in their honor and provide the clergy person with one check. Is, is that acceptable to CFA? Yes. Yeah. I, I think we can just do that. Is that all right with the body? Is there anybody that would object to doing that? In other words, we're not just saying for a specific person for a purpose, but for any reason that a congregation wants to take an offering for a clergy person, they may do that. Everybody's okay with that? Anybody not okay with that? All right, good. 
then uh, we'll make that an editorial change. Thank you very much, that was helpful. Yes, uh, I'm gonna go to some new people. Yes, microphone number two. Brenda Ehlers, clergy. Um, I have a question regarding um, page nine, line six through eight bank accounts, actually nine through 12 bank accounts. Questions in order. Sure, thank you. So it says any group of GNJ clergy together or with laity, is that mean one or more clergy or a clergy and a lay person? The answer is yes. That it's was just an generally, <laughs> the, the, generally the, the creation of bank accounts that come within the purview of the conference that create liability for us need to be accounted for. So, I mean, yeah, so I totally get that. I guess the clarity is around, um, I chair the Order of Deacons, and many deacons are clergy and serve organizations and institutions for which they have responsibility, signatory responsibility for bank accounts, but those are separately organized and incorporated organizations. So they don't generally come under the purview of the district superintendent, I believe in this case, or the bishop if need be. How is that rectified in this? Though if they're covered under a separate organization, chartered organization, they're not in the purview of this legislation. Okay, so the policy says GNJ clergy. I don't know if we can get some clarity on that for the purposes of deacons and those out serving outside. As always, anything that's done, many of our clergy do work in other organizations and things like that. If they are establishing bank accounts underneath the purview of those uh, organizations, that's outside of this. What's intended is that any bank accounts need to be covered under the purview of some organization, not just individuals themselves. All right, we're gonna go here, microphone number one. Costello Bishop, um, Petersburg, United Methodist Church. I would like to move to divide the question. And specifically, so that you don't have to guess what's in my mind, I'd like it divided into nine small questions. And uh, if I have a second, I'll speak to that. All right, there's a, a, a motion to divide the qu question into nine separate questions. Second. And there's a second. Um, yes, you may speak to that. Uh, the reason that I would do this is um, I do not have any problem whatsoever. In fact, I am in favor of CFNA and the cabinet developing policies. Uh, some of the policies that are right here that have been proposed, I would raise my hand and vote for them. As we went through this entire trial process over the last couple years, one of the things that happened is there were charges brought for which there were no violations of the Book of Discipline, no violations of Judicial Council decisions, no violations of conference policies. And it became painfully obvious we didn't have conference policies on these subjects. Jack Sharp himself was on the uh, Committee on Investigation. Just, He's, just tell us why you, you want to divide the question. That's exactly what I'm doing, Bishop. Okay. Yes, continue. The Committee on Investigation suggested that we develop some of these policies. Some of them are good. Some of them I don't think even meet constitutional muster within the Book of Discipline and in our rules. And I think we ought to vote on them one at a time, and some of them then we may want to refer to back to somebody. Some of them we may want to pass, but I don't think we should take the risk of all waving our hands and, Bishop, you say everything passed, and we're stuck with all the bad rules along with the good ones. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think you're ready to vote. All who would uh, support dividing this question into nine separate questions, meaning you, you take each one uh, separately, signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Aye. All those opposed by the same sign. Oh, that's very close. I think, uh, I think we are now uh, beyond our time limit, and this might be a good idea just to refer the whole matter to the annual conference session, not to CFA, if somebody wanted to make that motion. I 
Is there a second? All right, that is properly before us. All who would refer this to the annual conference session in May, please signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Aye. All opposed by the same sign, it carries. So we will uh, look at this at our May annual conference session. I invite now uh, to continue in our conversation uh, with CFA. Thank you. Um, just in regards to the previous, if I could just say, if you have concerns about it, we would enjoy hearing from you as we consider this. Um, we are just trying to provide a proactive policies that work for everyone, and uh, your comments are welcome. Um, I now would like to introduce Judy Colorado, who will be talking about the revised budget for 2019. We're not considering the 2020 budget. That will happen at annual conference in May. This is the revised budget for this year that for consideration. Judy? Thank you, Bob. Thank you. All right. So um, we are here to present a revised budget for 2019. As you all know, anything that comes through the CFNA, we'll look at it and reassess. And the budget is fluid. We need to respond to some of these changes. And, and the way we, uh, in your journal, it's on page 12, okay? So we are recommending these changes so that we can assist our congregations with their mission by having more resources for carrying out your mission. We want to move our stated 22, 2022 goal of apportioning churches at a 15.6% because uh, we did not reach our giving rate of 90% in 2018. While this occurred for many reasons, this adjustment will reach at least a 2019 goal of 91% giving rate. So you have helped us make understand or, uh, or help us to make outstanding progress through your generosity. Since 2012, and we have been reporting this at annual conferences, our, 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 our giving rate have gone from 78% to 88% in 2018. While we experience a little bit of this hiccup, we believe we will get back on track in 2019 with your help and faithfulness. The budget reductions are based on the following. One, not apportioning for an underspending. Staff and agencies have been good stewards of local church resources, and instead of money going to the reserves, it will stay with you and your congregation. Two, we are not hiring a staff in property and regional administration. We have recognized that staff have found more efficient strategies while increasing quality, resulting in savings to you and your congregation, and kudos to them. Good job. Eliminating some other spending that was nice to have, but in these important and urgent times, it is more prudent to leave more resources with you and your congregations. None of these reductions will hurt our mission and the progress we are making toward our mission. You have heard um, already that uh, in, in 2010, we, from the Committee on Investigations, they had a recommendation to the Greater New Jersey, uh, to GNJ. And while uh, the trial concluded, GNJ has at least to honor or an obligation to honor what was the resolution of that complaint, which required CFNA to reassess our 2019 budget and made adjustments. So um, we also thought and felt that this is the right thing to do. So as I mentioned earlier, um, this will have a one-time effect in our budget. So this is how we will do it. One, we will not hire a director of Connectional Ministries until the end of the year. And if I may say, it's uh, about a 110,000 reduction uh, of our 2019 budget we are talking about. Second, the superintendents will reduce each of their budgets for one year. Bishop Shaw has reduced part of his budget for one year. And there are a couple of other reductions that will help us to move forward. 
We have also taken steps to prevent, prevent something like this uh, in the future. So Bishop Shaw, I recommend that we adopt this budget to continue to keep faith by stewarding our congregation's resources that will keep more money with our congregations and complete a resolution that the conference has responsibility for. All right, thank you very much, Judy. We appreciate your leadership and the leadership of CFA to um, in this 2019 budget year to reduce the shared ministry apportionment to, so that more money stays in our local churches. All who would support signify by saying, uh, yes, microphone number three. Thank you, Bishop Creed Pogue, Westside Millville. Um, I'm trying to make sure, Judy, that I understand what you've said because I'm trying to reconcile that with the result of the FAQ that I submitted asking about what was happening with the connectional table in Section D. Is it that we're not funding the DCM position for the rest of the year after Hector makes a well-deserved move? Um, and we're also cutting some of these conference benevolence items or we're cutting the conference benevolence items out of 884,000 by about 100,000, which was what was in the document. And I was understanding that to mean that there was a proportional reduction, which can create its own set of discussions on the merits. But I'm trying to understand now where we are. Thank you. Thanks, Creed. Um, so I answered your FAQs. Um, Maybe they weren't as clear as they should have been, but the uh, Schedule D was is a, is a uniform reduction line by line. So if you were to take the one that was approved, it is a percentage, equal percentage across every line on the schedule. Outside of that, there are other opportunities that are added to that. Um, when Hector moves on, um, it's a process to find someone to replace Hector. It's, those are big shoes, and our anticipation is that's gonna take some time. So while that's ongoing, we are budgeting vacancy right there and we, that we anticipate. So those type of things that we are individually, line by line, seeing reductions against. So Schedule D is a planned reduction, a straight percentage by on every line. Outside of schedule is other reductions that are not necessarily equal on a percentage basis. All right. Uh, we're going to go to microphone number one. Bob Costello, Bishop from Petersburg United Methodist Church, clergy. I'd like to make a motion to amend these proposed budget that's been presented to us by deleting the $110,000 at the bottom of the page. And if I have a second, I'll be happy to speak to it. Second. All right, that is properly before you. What we are attempting to do here today is something we, we shouldn't do, in my opinion. We've had two and a half years of getting ready for, and we've just gone through a very divisive trial in our conference. Uh, Bishop Scholl and I have an agreement of one thing on this. We both think it ought to be over. It'll be moving on. I have a complete disagreement with what CFNA is doing here today with this money. Uh, as we went through the trial, those of you who were there know that there was information uh, submitted whereby what happened is a gentleman uh, named John Patchen and his wife Julie were extremely friendly with uh, Ji Sung Kwok and her daughter Lydia. The time came when they became generous to her and gave gifts to her. Uh, their daughter, Carol Newman, she's a dentist in Massachusetts and her husband is also a dentist, wrote letters back then to Bishop Devadar complaining. The combination of Bishop Devadar, Lynn Caterson, G. Sun tried to resolve the thing by writing some letters that uh, would have G. Sun beginning to repay the money we need to recognize that there was never a promise that Carol Newman would be paid anything. She's owed nothing. g Sun began to pay John uh, Patchen back and he got upset. He tore up the checks. In the trial, we had to bring her old checks and her checkbooks and her check registers and her bank statements to show that he rejected that. 
There is no contract in place between Xi Sun and John Patchen. There is no place, no contract between the conference and John Patchen. The letters that Dr. Newman has written are trying to treat, teach us some Latin. She's trying to teach us respondeat superior. You know, the boss has to answer for the employees and trying to basically say the United Methodist Church needs to pay her back. She is owed absolutely nothing. She could have even come to the trial and didn't show up. She's never showed up. I'm the one that said the one that she's made hit and run. Two bishops, two sets of letters, we're still on the track. It's time for us to recognize that our bishops are doing the best they can. They don't owe anything to Carol Newman, neither does G. Sun. That was the result of the trial where it was found that G. Sun was exonerated on every single charge. We've already spent 79,200 and some dollars on that process. We don't need to throw good money after bad. If Carol Newman wants to sue us, Time. if Carol Newman wants to sue us, turn it over to the insurance companies. Let's not turn it over to our churches and burden them. All right, that is a speech against. Can I speak to that, Bishop? What's that? Can I speak to his comment? Uh, you, you have an opportunity at the end to speak to it. So friends, this is a very difficult time and a very difficult situation. And I often do not like to weigh in on matters like this. But I think information is important. I was not at the trial. I did not testify at the trial. I'm actually sorry that we had to go into this much depth. There are two stories. One is, just as Reverend Costello has shared, that a, a family wanted to share $110,000 with a pastor, a former pastor, and did that of their own and on their own account. And that Reverend Kwok was not found guilty of any disciplinary charges. That is all fact. That also, it's been stated that Reverend Kwok did attempt to pay back um, and that uh, Mr. Patchen would not receive the money. This is a very complicated matter. But in 2010, when the complaint was first shared, there was a letter written to the complainant that said every cent would be paid back. Later on, it became aware that none of the money was paid back. What Dr. Newman would share is that a pastor became very friendly with her father and spent a lot of time with her father, elderly gentleman, 82 years old, and that caused disruption in the family. That the uh, mother, no, let me finish, I let you talk. All I'm saying is I've talked to both parties in this matter. I'm just giving the fuller detail. That Dr. Newman would say, got close to her father, that created disruption in the family. The mother asked to move away from this area to Maine to get out of the situation. The father reluctantly came. It created great division in the family. And that uh, she is looking for the money that was said to be paid back. There's two sides, two different stories. What you're being asked to do today is to help all of this move forward. 
there is no dispute that Reverend Kwok was not, was not found guilty. There's no dispute about that. Um, and there's no dispute that she received $110,000. There's no dispute that the complaint was filed in 2010. There's no dispute that Bishop Devadar wrote and said every cent would be paid back. That's where we are. We're just trying to move all of this off the plate so that we can move forward. It's not costing you any more in apportionment money. It's all being absorbed within the budget by certain cuts just this year. The goal is, let's move forward. Bob, do you wanna have the last word? Yeah, I, on behalf of CFNA, we fully appreciate this is a very emotional issue for many. Um, we have not made any judgment about the validity of the issue or guilt of anyone. That's not our intent here. But rather, we were presented with an issue of liability, if you regard, to the conference that we needed to deal with. Um, that is an ongoing liability, if you will, that's in front of us that we will need to fund, most likely. We have reviewed our insurance policies. It does not cover something of this nature. So if there's a settlement to be made, and we anticipate that there will be one based on the nature of what's out there, that we will need to fund that. So we have proposed a budget to you to identify where that funding will come from on the assumption that we will have to settle this in order to make a, a move forward on behalf of all involved. All right, all who would support, we're going to a vote. All right. Yes, we, uh, we can take a paper ballot. It would need the approval of the annual conference as we were just looking up. All who would support a paper ballot, please signify by saying aye. We're in the midst of a vote. Is, I understand, I understand, I understand. <laughs> the, the, all who would support signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Aye. All opposed by the same sign. Aye. It does not carry. It required a one third vote to support. There were about 20% or so. We're now gonna go to the vote all who would support signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Or oh, excuse me, one second, one second, one second, I'm sorry. We're now gonna vote on the budget that's been presented by CFA. All who would to, support. I think it's a work of the amendment uh, the proposed amendment. by Bob at this point. To vote on the amendment to delete. Ah, I'm sorry, that's correct. We're voting on the amendment to delete the $110,000. That is what is before us. I apologize, Mr. Pope. Uh, what is before us is the amendment to delete $110,000. All who would support signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Aye. All opposed by the same sign. Aye. The amendment does not carry. The budget is now before you. All who would support signify by saying aye and raising your hand. All opposed by the same sign, the budget carries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, CFA. We appreciate your good work. Let's share our appreciation for them.